Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be finishing chapter 4 and uh, or sorry not finishing today we're going to be starting chapter 4 and we're going to start with section 4.1 which is going to go through the basics of uh, probability. Now to start off with the definition that we use for probability uh, we have here that um, we are looking oops, there we go uh, that we are looking at either a statistic or a probability and what we want to do is we want to say that a probability is a numerical measure of the likelihood of the likelihood that a specific event will occur all right now a statistic uh, what we do with a statistic uh, we basically look at a sample so when we start looking at a sample we then can extract or we can then make an inference about something in the population now as far as a probability goes uh, as far as the probability goes, we want to see, looking at all of the possible outcomes, what is this event or how is this event likely to occur within some sample that we can observe. So typically within a probability, we go with information about the population. So this is going to be population information and we use that uh, to basically conduct a statistic or to uh, basically infer a probability for a sample. Now, when we start looking at this, we're going to have to define a, a few more things as we're working through this, uh, mainly because when we start looking at probability, uh, we have some notation that we want to use. So that notation would be listed here that any time that we want to use here we go. Anytime that we want to use uh, probability notation, we're going to go with the capital P. Anytime that we want to define a specific event, we're going to go with uh, events A, B, and C. And then finally, anytime that we want to, uh, let's say, elaborate that this is the probability of this event happening, then we're going to use the notation P of A. Now, on this example, we're going to be looking at, this says that a probability experiment consists of rolling a single six-sided fair die. So the first thing that we're going to do is I want to list the outcomes, right? What are the possible uh, scenarios that we can see when we're rolling this six-sided die? Now, one of the things that I'm drawing on here really quick is I'm going to show my really quick attempt to draw this die here. And it can look like this, all right? Uh, which means as we start rolling this die, what are the possible outcomes? Well, we could have the number one. That means we could roll the number one. We could roll the number two. We could roll the number three the number four, the number five, and the number six. So as we start looking at this sample space, this sample space is actually provided to us, uh, which will be just the numbers consisting of one, two, three, four, five, and six, where each of these numbers, each of the faces of the die, have an equal chance of occurring once it's rolled. So the probability of selecting a five. Now, when we look at the probability of selecting a five, we're going to look at our sample space and we're going to see how many times does that occur. So when we look at part B, we want to say the probability of 5 occurring has to be 1 out of 6. All right. Now, this 1 6, if you take your calculator and if you enter the fraction 1 6, then we get an approximation of 0 0.16. 7. 
All right. Now, if we wanted to do this as a percentage, then we would say uh, the percentage here would be 16.7 percent. Right. So, depending on how we want the answer, whether whether the answer be in fraction form or whether the fraction be, or sorry, whether the probability be in decimal form or in percentage form, we have a way to get all three of them. Now, what does it mean for probability to be even in this particular case? So again, we're gonna refer back to this uh, six-sided die. And when we refer back to this six-sided die, we're gonna go through and we're gonna make sure that we look at the events again. So even, how many of the numbers are even within the six-sided die? That's gonna be the two, the four, and the six. Therefore, when we're looking the probability when we're looking for the probability of rolling an even number, that is three of these outcomes or three of these events occurring out of the original six, which means this is still one half, which is still just 0.5, or we could say 50%. All right, now, as we start jumping more into probability and we start developing this concept a little bit more, we have to go ahead and we have to analyze that probability uh, can only be between two different values. And those two values must be between zero and must be between one as listed here. Now, simply because if we consider the probabilities to be in percentage form, that means it's gonna go from 0% to 100%. 0% basically means as a probability, it is impossible for that to happen. So if an event ever has a probability of zero, that means that event will never happen. However, if the probability is one, that means that percentage wise, we're looking at 100%. That means that the event is certain to occur, meaning it will happen. All right. Now, Moving down to unusual events. If you recall in the class, we had this common theme of saying, hey, what is significantly high? What is significantly low? And if you remember, when we started defining significantly high and significantly low, one of the items that we started looking at was this bell curve. And we started looking at two standard deviations. And then we said anything to the right of these two standard deviations or anything to the left of those two standard deviations, that was going to be significantly high. Anything below that was going to be significantly low. Now this is gonna be important because the empirical rule, the empirical rule tells us that within the two standard deviations, we have about 95% of our data. That means that to the outsides or on these tails, we have about left over 5%, which means if our probability falls within this 5% guideline, we're gonna label it as either significantly high or significantly low, but for future reference, that's just going to be something that we call a significant, sorry, an unusual event. So an unusual event is typically an event with less than 5% of probability. That's going to be how we define that unusual event. All right, so we kind of want to keep that in our back pocket uh, as we keep going through this course, that anytime we're looking at unusual events, again, we're still looking at the same thing that we started with when we were looking for events being unusually high or unusually low. Awesome. Now, the next section, or not the next section, sorry, the next page. Uh, we're still gonna keep reviewing this whole idea of probability. So. Here, really quickly, I'm gonna pause the video, I'm gonna fill in the tables, and then we're gonna talk about this uh, to save a little bit of time. All right, so just bear with me here. All right, so now we are back. All right, so on the screen here, uh, you're gonna see that I've uh, went ahead and I've uh, filled in some of the tables here. Now, we're gonna make sure that we go through some of these probabilities uh, that are going to be different or is going to be a different way of calculating these probabilities. So what we wanna see first is we wanna identify what a relative probability is. 
And a relative frequency probability, this is going to be when we run an experiment, when we conduct an experiment. Uh, this means that uh, if I were to give you a die and I would say I want you to roll the die four times and observe what numbers come out. We could then identify what was the probability of the number five occurring or the number four or the number three within that sample or within that experiment that we conducted. That's an example of relative frequency. However, classical probability, classical probability, it, this is more of a theoretical probability. And the theoretical probability basically says that uh, we would initially account for all of the outcomes that are ever possible. So again, theoretically, what are those outcomes? And then we would see within all of those outcomes, what are the probability or what is the chances of our selected event occurring, right? An example of that was in the previous, uh, one of the previous examples where we were asked to find the probability of the number five on a six-sided die. Again, we didn't run that experiment. That experiment was more of a theoretical observation saying that these are the six outcomes, but then the number five is only one of those outcomes. Therefore, the probability should be one six. All right, that's what a classic probability looks like. A subjective probability, we really won't be looking or working too much with these subjective probabilities, uh, but we do have them here and, and uh, we do have to, uh, again, state some parameters around them, right? One of the examples here says that if we're looking at a subjective probability, what is the probability that the next dollar bill you spend was previously spent by Beyonce? Right. So as I'm looking at that, well, first of all, I'm quarantined, so I can't exactly go out and spend some money right now. Uh, secondly, I don't know Beyonce. Uh, third, I think she might live in New York. So I would say that my probability is probably very, very small, very close to unlikely of uh, unlikely that that event will ever occur. Who knows, maybe one of you uh, knows Beyonce and maybe your probability will be a whole lot higher than mine is. You know, but again, that's all a subjective probability, all right, versus classical or theoretical. So in this bottom example, uh, we wanna see that a bag has one red marble, one blue marble, one yellow marble, one orange marble, one purple marble, and then the table below shows the results of choosing the marble out of the bag and replacing it in each trial. So it says give the answers as decimals and percentages. So before I go into it, I'm actually gonna pause the video really quick and I want you to go through and see if you could fill this out on your own. When I come back and I unpause this, uh, I'm gonna have this filled in for you. So take some time and see if you could fill in this example for yourself. All right, so we're back now and I filled in the rest of the table here. Uh, so, when we want to look for the probability of a yellow or an orange occurring out of the 100 trials, we then have to consider how many of the initial bag is yellow and how many is orange. So yellow, 18, orange, 17, therefore we add those two together, which makes it 35 out of 100. Then I give my two answers in percentage form and in decimal form. And simply because the question was said to give the answers as decimals and percentages. Now, I keep doing the same thing for the rest of the problems. Keep finding what those probabilities are. Now, I want you to focus on part E when we're looking at a classical probability. I notice the classical probability, this was theoretical. Again, if we didn't run the experiment 100 times or 600 times, but just in theory, how much or what would the probability be to get a blue marble if we didn't run the experiment? So theoretically, that's only one marble out of the five that are in the bag. Therefore, the probability is one out of five. Now, I want you to take a moment and review the law of large numbers. We are going to talk about it as we proceed in class, but again, it doesn't make it its appearance too much. All right, now the next section I'm gonna be uploading is going to be section 4.2, so stay tuned for that.